Uh, we can't see you from the waist down, Kevin. <laughs> Uh, one thing, though, is I'm, I'm waiting for a world champion participant to request to be able to play on stage in their underwear. It hasn't happened yet. It's like, excuse me, could you just put, like, a, a curtain here? <laughs> but uh, we are ready. These players are clothed and into game four. It will be Pavel with his Cthune Warrior deck that he failed to win with moments ago against Dr. Hippie, going with try number two with his Druid. Yeah, now this one is another tough matchup for Druid. Cthune Warrior can pressure early, they are, or earlier than normal Control Warrior can. They also have an absurd amount of life gain, which can make the win condition of Malagos plus spells very difficult for the Druid. Yeah, the way that the Druid generally beats most Control Warrior decks is just kind of attritioning their removal. You just play card draw like Nourish, uh, you play big threat after big threat, and eventually the Warrior runs out of ways to kill your guys. But Cthune Warrior not only has a bunch of ways to kill your guys, but has a bunch of ways to kill you. And Pavel's gonna be looking to put the pressure on himself. Uh, not with this hand, though. This hand is a little slow for Pavel. No, he doesn't have any of those Cthune activators. He doesn't have Cthune Chosen, Beckoner of Evil, well, Disciple of Cthune. But as I say, he draws one still a little bit of a way, away, ways away from activating the Twin Emperor of Eklor or the Ancient Shield Bear in his deck. Yeah, but Pavel does have the uh, Acolyte of Pain shield block, the ability to cycle through his deck. I would not be surprised to see that Acolyte of Pain come down and then Disciple of Cthune used on his own Acolyte of Pain to draw cards. There aren't that many targets to kill with Disciple of Cthune's battle cry in this matchup, so you can often use it in combination with Acolyte to ensure you get additional card draw. A lot of the times it's just used to activate, execute, or maybe to get closer to being able to allow Shield Slam to kill off a minion, so... Uh, those types of things are not the greatest uses. So drawing a card is actually fantastic, considering that this matchup, you need that card draw because Druids are going to get those cards and get that mana very quickly. But one crucial thing is Dr. Hippie missed Wild Growth again. So he's not going to have that sort of mana advantage as much as he'd like. He can still coin out the Mire Keeper here, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, Mire Keeper will get Dr. Hippie a little bit closer to his bigger spells. He'll be able to get it to five for either Nourish or Azure Drake next turn. And yeah, this will allow Pavel to use that Disciple as removal, cycling through his Acolyte. So uh, not getting two cards, but still able to get the removal effect at least of the Disciple and powering up his Cthune as well. Hmm. One thing that's worth noting about Dr. Hippie's specific build of Druid is that he's playing a build of Druid that's much more designed to be good against aggressive decks and not nearly as good against Control Warrior. Uh, many versions of Druid we see with Ancient of War or Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Uh, Dr. Hippie has neither. He has a copy of Berengeddon and a copy of Blood Mage Thalnos. That leaves him much more vulnerable to the attrition plan of just removing each of his big threats. Yeah, which is unlike the deck we just saw from Pavel, who didn't run those anti-aggro cards and decided to run Dark Arakoa as threats that he could play on curve. Dark Arakoa sort of serves a double purpose, though, and that it can also be good against aggro. But going back to this match as well, Pavel just throws down the second Acolyte of Pain, so he's gonna be able to cycle through his deck quite effectively. Dr. Hippie, that's a hand full oh. of spells. And that's Wild Growth, Wild Growth, not on time. He wanted those a few turns ago. I would not be surprised to see Dr. Hippie hold on to certainly at least one of those until he does get to, uh, to 10 mana, uh, but it looks like he's gonna go ahead and ramp a little bit and then clear off what he can of Pavel's board. He wants to deny Pavel from getting additional card draws from this Acolyte, so he's going to expend resources dealing with it here. Whoa, Cthune's Chosen. Drawn from Pavel right on time. That allows him to get up to that 10-10 Cthune. Activates Twin Emperor of Eklor. Druids can sometimes have trouble dealing with two four sixes uh, on seven. And Pavel no slams the Sylvanas. This is... <laughs> A little bit interesting, actually, because Sylvanas has tons of powerful uses in this matchup in particular. Yeah, Sylvanas is particularly strong when you play it into big minions from your opponent, uh, like, for instance, if, Do if Dr. Hippie had Arcane Giant. But uh, Pavel knows that there aren't that many big minions in Dr. Hippie's deck. It's essentially just Arcane Giants and Malagos, but if your opponent's getting a turn with Malagos, you, you've got something wrong going on. Yeah. Uh, so here I think that he just wants to throw Dr. Hippie's curve off as much as possible, force him to deal with this Sylvanas right now. Also, one big exclusion from Dr. Hippie's deck is Ragnaros, the Fire Lord, which is also one of the uses that you can save Sylvanas for in order to try and make an awkward situation from your opponent. So uh, Pavel also knows that he's going to be able to curve into some quite a few good plays over the next coming turn. So if he makes Dr. Hippie's turns awkward now, he might be able to put himself in a better position as he moves forward. And Dr. Hippie you know, has a pretty good nourish here, finds his Malagos. So... 
Uh, now he's going to be looking to assemble enough damaging spells to just burst Pavel down. Pavel has not been able to really gain any significant amount of armor yet, so he actually has none. And he doesn't have uh, any shield bearers in his hands, so he is really actually kind of in more risk of just getting burned down than you generally expect a Cthulhu warrior to be at this stage of the game. Yeah, now... He is going to be able to develop uh, something powerful. He'll probably just Cthune's Chosen. He can actually just, if he really wants to, just equip Gorehowl uh, because there is no weapon removal uh, from Dr. Hippie's deck. He does not run Harrison Jones if he wanted to be super mana efficient. But being proactive with a Cthune's Chosen and making so he has the option to Twin Emperor Vecklor next turn can actually be a big deal. Oh, and this is a pretty aggressive play from Pavel here, choosing to use his Disciple of Cthune. This isn't even to put his Cthune to 10. Often if you see someone just fire off Disciple of Cthune, it's like, okay, I'm going to enable my Cthune cards. Uh, but here he is just, again, kind of trying to force Dr. Hippie to react to his board, spend spells dealing with these things, and not just sit back and armor up and try and tank things out. That's much more difficult to manage when your opponent's drawn as many cards as Dr. Hippie has. If he can force out removal spells that later on in the game could end up going face with Malagos, then he, he could put himself in a good position where he doesn't need as much life gain. Uh, but now he doesn't have that. He, I guess he drew into an Execute Activator if he were to draw into Execute with Ravaging Ghoul. But now he doesn't have that extra two damage on demand. So we'll see if he's going to pay off for him. Ooh. Wisps of the Old Gods, an option for Dr. Hibby. Uh, another Nourish. He's already played one, has another in his hand, so... Kind of difficult to make use of that much card draw. Uh, you can actually often end up fatiguing yourself if you go for too many nourishes in a game against a control warrior who's just run out of actual threats. Uh, but does take the Wisps of the Old Gods. Uh, that can give him the ability to generate a big board uh, that Pavel may be forced to use Brawl or Ravaging Ghoul. And if he is, does have to use his Ravaging Ghoul, he may not have a way to enable Execute later on when he needs it. Yeah, sometimes the Control Warrior versus Druid matchup can come down to fatigue situations where both players are trying to run each other out of resources. Cthune Warrior is less likely because, you know, of course, Cthune Warrior does have Cthune to play on the board, which is usually uh, ends the game in one form uh, or another. But Pavel goes ahead and plays the Twin Emperor in Vecklor. There is a board already for Dr. Hippie, so he does, he, he's already a little bit of the ways there in regards to clearing off these four sixes, which are usually pretty awkward for Druids to deal with. Well, there's a way to deal with it if he wants. Y Yogg-Saron yeah. comes up with the Hepper Dark Hippie. Did not go so well for him last game, though, so... Uh, he also does, as you mentioned, have a bit of a board himself. He could uh, potentially just use his minions plus uh, swipe. He'd have to commit a little bit more than just the swipe and hero power, though, because those are four six. Yeah. Now, one thing that may not be relevant in this matchup, but but could be relevant uh, in matchups to uh, in the matchups to come, is that Yogg-Saron does affect Malagos. It's true. <laughs> or Malagos affects Yogg-Saron. So if Malagos is on the board and Yogg-Saron has played, all the spells that Malag or that Yogg-Saron casts get that spell power benefit. So uh, sometimes I I've seen it happen in Cthulhu Warrior matchups before. A lot of times Malagos doesn't live to tell the tale, but. Here we go, finding ways to use that Wisps of the Old Gods. Yeah, and this does allow Dr. Hippie to leverage that in such a way that it doesn't uh, allow it to just get countered by a Ravaging Ghoul or a Revenge. And now, Pavel, he can clear this off with either one of those, the Ravaging Ghoul or Revenge, uh, plus the attack of his minion. It is a little bit awkward, though, because he'd love to be able to actually keep the pressure on with that Emperor. He can use Revenge plus Gore Howl. Uh, to clear it off, it's true. be more mana efficient. Uh, but I, I, don't, I don't know how much use to revenge is going to happen later on in the match. There's not really many three health minions that you'll need to kill once you get sub 12 health in this matchup. A lot of times it can help you reach Malagos if you need that damage, but that's about it. The Ancient Shield Bear is the draw for Pavel, and he already has Bran Bronzebeard in his hand. So Dr. Hippie, he's been setting up with those burn spells plus Malagos, but Pavel is finding the armor gain to get himself very far out of range. Yeah, Arcane Giant picked up for Dr. Hippie, so that's a big threat that he can use. I'm wondering when Dr. Hippie is going to decide to use that Yogg-Saron. There's two ways you can look at it. You can play it as another big threat in your deck in, to reduce the risk that, you know, you discard your hand or that you draw too many cards and fatigue yourself. Or you can try and play it as a win condition very late in the game after you casted all of your spells to try and go for a last-ditch effort against Warriors to maybe sneak out a win. Yeah, Yogg's a lot worse the latter of those nowadays, though, because you know, if, you, if there's nothing on the board, you can just Yogg and, oops, purified it. I'm dead. And we did see a Yogg exactly purified that. in the group stages, so 
uh, it can happen, and uh, a lot of times it will happen. Yeah, and then Dr. Hippie, though, he has the the arcane giant. Ooh. Uh, Pavel actually is going right ahead, though. He picked up the Execute, not really wasting any time to just double Ancient Shield Bearer here. I'm somewhat surprised to see this, actually, because he does lose some of the value of the Arbor Gain because the opponent can just immediately attack and uh, deal so much damage and does have a minion to contest either of these minions on the board as well. Yeah, the, the Brand plus Asia Shield Bearer is not really going anywhere, right. is the thing. He, he, he can wait for that. He's not in any danger. Uh, now that he's seen Innervate, now that he's seen, uh, hasn't seen Emperor Thorsan, there's not really any combination of cards that could have killed him in that position if he had just had removed the Arcane Giant and waited. Uh, but he, I guess he realized that he wants to put threats on the board right now to try and make Dr. Hippie's turns maybe a little bit worse. Right, well, Dr. Hippie's going to dig some more. Ooh, picks up Fandral with a Raven Idol. That can be a pretty big way for him to gain additional threats later on. We were talking about how he can run the risk of just having all of his major threats exhausted. But the Raven Idol plus uh, Fandral can pick up maybe something like Force of Nature plus a minion, and that, and that could be a very big deal in that kind of game. Oh, yeah. Uh, I can give you that gas that you need to finish out a game, but whoa, this is getting a little awkward yep. for Pavel. Pavel does not have a Shield Slam, and there's two 8-8s on the board. He could go for a Brawl that could go very badly for him. Unlikely to go very well. He has a 1 in 3 of things going very well, but he could effectively trade his 6-6 six, six for an 8-8, eight, eight, uh, most likely if he did Brawl. Uh, but yeah, he's just kind of running low on relevant removal effects and is in a bit of a pickle. Oh yeah, he doesn't have Cthune either to present his own threat on the board. Not that it'd even be good in this situation. I believe it's at a 12-12 right now. He's not even had a low enough life total to, say, Gore Howl and Revenge. He, I don't know, maybe he just has to remove one of these and hope that he finds a way to deal with the next one next turn. But that Execute is premium removal. If he right, uses well, that Execute now, Malagos comes out. He's in trouble. Here's, here's the, the brawl. brawl. There's a chance this goes very well for Pavel. Oh, oh it does! Goodness. Shield Bear survives the brawl. That is absolutely huge for Pavel. Pavel is on fire today. Not much can stop this man, not even Dr. Hippie, but still a lot of threats that Dr. Hippie can present, and he might even be able to find more with this Vandral plus Raven Idol. Oh, Plaxi Amber Weaver. Pablo would love one of those. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be pretty good. Lord of the Arena, though, is just, just the most powerful. Another Raven Idol. He, he's just going, he's just oh going off, comboing off here. That's also another cheap spell that he can use to fuel the Yogg-Saron. But the scary thing for Dr. Hippie here is because that Shield Bear survived and got a hit in, he's taken a lot of damage. Oh, Medivh the Guardian, that is a very yeah. powerful card if the game does go long. Wow, Medivh the Guardian. It's big spells left in his deck. I mean, he got, he's got Mark of the Wild. Uh, I mean, in general right now, that's just a big mini that he could place on the board. The, the extra stuff that he gets from the spell is sort of just a, a side thing. Right, and Dr. Hippie, we saw, we've seen this before. He, he feral raged, went face. This is, this is the look of a man who's looking to Yogg. Oh yeah. I mean, there, there is another option for Dr. Hippie, should he so choose next turn with Malagos plus, you know, two of those cheap spells, mm -hmm. Moonfire plus Living Roots. And, you know, Pavel, he probably feels like he wants to go aggressive here, but leaving Fandral on the board can sometimes be a rough situation. But he's already seen a lot of the cards that it gets high value with. This is actually kind of a, a serious situation. Oh, we are going to see the Doom Caller. I was going to say, if he did just go face with this, uh, with this Shield Bearer and Hippie cast Yogg next turn, if he takes any damage from Yogg, if, for, for instance, there's a Hellfire, Gorhal's just lethal. That is very true. And so now Dr. Hippie is on the ropes. Let's see what he's going to go with. He's got Malagos, Moonfire, and Living Roots. He could clear the board with those. The Fandral would have to trade into the Doom Caller in order to do so. And Malagos would be on the board, which would mean like a Cthune would not kill him because he'd have enough health presented on the board with minions to survive unless all of the shots were to go face or a lot, which is very, very unlikely. And because Dr. Hippie has gotten the double Raven Idol off and he picked up Medivh, he picked up Lord of the Arena, he can try and play an attrition game, even if this Malagos just gets killed. He's not reliant on just uh, using these, a little bit of a misstep oh. from Dr. Hippie here. He actually well, uses- maybe not. Does he know he, he's playing around Brawl. Yeah. He actually, maybe not a misstep at all. This is, looks on the surface, you think about it initially, oh, missed two minions, but 
This means there's only Malagos in play, so a brawl from Pavel does nothing. Yeah, very good point, very good point. He's forcing Pavel to have direct removal, whether it be a shield slam because he has the armor for it, or that execute. And uh, one thing about Ancient Shield Bear is it's also just a, a big threat. It's a, it's a six six. It's something that Doctor Hippie has to deal with. And Pavel saw that Doctor Hippie didn't really struggle, but used a lot of resources to kill the last one, the yep. last board. And Pavel here with Gorhal though, able to take down Malagos and still have that Gorhal equipped. And that Gorhal can represent damage either to remove a big minion or just go to Hippie's face. If he does find Cthune, it could be pretty big, but. Dr. Hippie, he discovered Mediv and Mark of the Wild in the same Raven Idol. He's actually able to generate a 9-9 taunt and a 2-drop minion. A 2-mana minion. This is if it's Doomsday, well projected here. Oh, God. Oh, no. Don't say it, TJ. Don't say it. OK. <laughs> Just a dust bore. Just a dust bore. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, Kimber. one <laughs> You don't get much more attack than that in a two-minute minion. That's and very I mean, true. Frankly, Pavel has no easy to remove it. Dustboard's in this situation actually fantastic. It's going to shred it's some attack. armor for sure. And Dr. Hibby, this is not a hand you see very often for Malagos Druid, a deck that's majority spells, and he's got majority minions. And they're big minions to boot. Yeah, and now Dr. Hibby very much in the driver's seat. He can just play this slow. Yeah, he has so many of these powerful tools. He is, unfortunately for him, at very low life, though. So he needs to be careful to maneuver around the threat of Cthune coming down for Pavel. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because he doesn't have any way to answer the Cthune other than Yogg-Saron. So he's going to be, and I, I, I don't even know if he has a Raven Idol. He got one Raven Idol from the first Raven Idol. And he got Tiny Finn oh at the God. World Championship <laughs> Final. Let's hear it for Merlock Tiny Finn. Maybe he'll live up to his dream of being able to provide lethal damage All for right, his well, owner. Pavel is clearly brawling next turn. Will the Tiny Fin win the brawl? Oh, that's the big question. Here it is. Oh! Medivh is the winner. Tiny Fin goes down. And Pavel looks like he might be going down to the Guardian himself. Dr. Hippie's still not out of the woods yet. He's got a lead, or what appears to be a lead in this series. But there are some crucial draws still left in Pavel's deck. He's got some hard removal left. And we saw a brawl earlier this game go exactly how Pavel needed it. That was exactly the worst case scenario for him there. And he's got to figure out a way to get back into this game. Because he's facing down not just a huge threat, but a huge hand of cards with very little remaining in his own tech. It looks like he's going to try to rely on the Ravaging Bull oh. to trade in, and that hurts. This is, ooh, though, Dr. Hippie, he is running low in his deck. So if Pavel is able to answer these threats, it could mean that Dr. Hippie goes to fatigue. And, you know, if Pavel, there are still cards that he has to account for, like Yogg-Saron, but as far as he's concerned, he oh, can sort of wow. count what's up. Oh, wow. Is he, he's, is he doing it? Oh, oh wow. dear, Yogg-Saron. Yeah, uh-oh, that could go wrong. That, no, it goes completely right for Dr. Hippie. And now, ooh. All oh. right, and Yogg's down. Okay, that effectively, Yogg was Starfall. Yogg removed, but that's that's actually not that bad because Yogg was cat trick too. Yeah, it did play a cat trick as well, and that does protect his Medivh the Guardian from being traded into. So now, Powell's forced to face tank that, take nine damage. There's still a Cthune in Pavel's deck, but Doctor Hippie is out of cards. His last card is going to be Living Roots. Can Doctor Hippie do it? He does not have many cards to work with. Can use the innervate. It's gonna dig a little bit into fatigue because of the draw from Azure Drake. Living Roots will take out the Beckoner of Evil. He gets a Wisp. We've had all kinds of stars here on stage for the final so far. But I mean, this is it. He can't even play Baron Geddon because that means. Oh, it's Cthulhu! And Cthulhu right shoots in the time. game. Cthulhu destroys Dr. Hippie's board and Dr. Hippie. We're going to game five. Pavel leads three to one.